So welcome to our show Beyond the Classroom. For all of our listeners, introducing our guest today, Rashi Watani. Um, Rashi, Rashi currently works at Goldman Sachs as a corporate credit risk analyst, and uh, she went to the University of Michigan and Arbor um, as an organizational studies major at the College of Literature, Science and the Arts, known as LSA, and also had a business minor from Ross. Uh, she worked with on course in her 11th and 12th grade, and we've been very impressed with everything she's been able to accomplish. Rashi, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Um, so let's get started. My very first question to you is, you know, really, let's go back to your time of applications. How did you decide on UMICH? Yeah, sure. And also to start off, thank you for having me. This is very exciting and I'm glad to be here. So when I was applying to colleges, we had like, I remember a three tier system of the types of colleges to apply to. So we had like the target schools, the safety schools and the dream schools. And Michigan, for me, was always a yep. dream school. It was, um, at the time, I was applying to biology and neuroscience majors. And I knew that Michigan was a research university. So if I were to go there, there would be a lot of resources for that degree. But at the same time, I was told yep. by Sneha and, you know, all the counselors at on course that University of Michigan is a great liberal arts school for you to change your mind if you ever you yeah. know, realize that this is not the right place for you. You have that option to explore within LSNA, which is um, the liberal arts college. It's called Literature, Sciences and the Arts. And uh, I knew that I could take a lot more classes just beyond what I thought I wanted to major in. And I actually ended up switching my major. So that ended up being true. Um, I was fascinated by the number of clubs that we had on campus. I knew that our student body was huge and that may seem intimidating, but I knew that as we went on the years, like junior year, senior year, the class sizes become smaller. So I enjoyed the yeah. fact that it would be a large school. And I was also very excited by the fact that, you know, there were these like clubs and these like weird classes about aliens that I could take just for fun. And yeah, that's one of the reasons I went. Then, of course, my grandfather also went there for his MBA. Yeah. He went right. like on a ship several years ago on a full scholarship. And it was, that's you know, crazy. just like a nice little full circle moment for me to be accepted and go there as well. Yeah, that's awesome. That legacy and, you know, you being exposed to you, you know, from very early on definitely makes the yep. story even sweeter. Um, and explore you did, right, at, at, at liberal arts schools. So interestingly, like you said, your intended major was biology. And you also had an interest in poetry, right, that earned you yeah. the Lloyd Scholars for writing and the arts. So how did you come to make this very drastic switch to organizational studies? You know, can you just take us through that process of exploration a little bit? Yeah, definitely. So the Lloyd Scholars for Writing in the Arts, that is basically a dorm that you live in, that you're assigned to based on creative ability. So that can be poetry, it can be any type of writing, any type of like drawing, painting, but it's a community of artists, which was very interesting because I never coined myself as an artist, but I only like wrote poems for fun. And I was like, okay, like this looks like a nice dorm to live in. So maybe I'll apply to this. And it was one of the most incredible experiences. I joined the poetry club. It was a really small club of like 10 people and there were two leaders and we did um, performances. So we would write poetry and then do like oral recitations. And I started to like learn a lot of tips and tricks of how to write different types of poems, different structures. And uh, we ended up performing in for the program and I ended up getting first place for one of the oral wow. recitations which was such a good moment because firstly I was like oh I have an accent and so no one's going to understand me and you have to like memorize yeah. it and be very confident and it was just like a good moment of validation that you know like this environment is really supportive and I can kind of explore all the different facets of who I am so going back to your question, like, how did I make that switch? I got a job at the Bajo Leadership Institute on campus. And mm -hmm. during at yep. that job, I essentially had to mentor students 
who had startups on campus or who were starting new organizations on campus. So it could be like for profit, non profit, could be just a club that they're starting. And then my job, and I received training for this, but my job was to give them advice on resources that they can reach out to for funding, give them advice on basically like strategizing what's the first step, what's the second step, um, and then also like helping them. Right write proposals for grants etc and so through that i realized i really enjoyed working with um people i really enjoyed working on like business ideas and i was really good at this job i actually kept that job for four years and i got promoted through it so like it that's like my first real work experience wow. and through that yeah. job i realized that i would really like to do something in consulting so that's how i kind of mm. switched to like more businessy um how i reached finance right. is a totally like random different story but that's yeah. how i realized i probably don't want to be in a research lab and i did um do a year long research in a mathematics and psychology lab at michigan and that was a great experience okay. but i just realized i wanted to do something more hands on and more client facing yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense um and you also have a minor in business from ross right so from yeah. as an lsa student is that something you need to apply to or you know if you can also just tell other people interested in dumish what that process is like yep so the ross minor you can apply to at the end of your sophomore year i believe and we had to submit our transcript so far we had to submit are um, we had to submit essays so it's like a brand new application within the university for yeah. why ross and then one of that was one of the questions why ross and the second question was introduce yourself to your classmates on the first day of class at ross and that was apparently the deal breaking essay that everyone would say this is what you know the counselors look for and it is a competitive yeah. minor because a lot of people want to enter want to the program it. and i yeah. was already in the capo sales track which is it's not a minor but it's a certificate in marketing and sales because i was still figuring out what i wanted to do but at the at the point of the minor i was pretty set on consulting so i was like okay i'm going to apply to the minor and i'm going to explain like my experience with the baja leadership institute and how that directly ties into consulting work and i got in but by the time i got in i had an internship at goldman sachs and um it was the best experience so i started taking all of my minor classes in finance and that's really what piqued right. my interest yeah yeah that's awesome that you can also use that minor how you want so you really used it to learn all about finance which is great um yeah. and even for students otherwise interested in transferring to ross from lsa is that a process that's easy or or how difficult is that yeah so there's a process i believe you can have preferred admissions that means that when you apply, you might apply to ross and not get in instantly but you have yeah. the opportunity to apply at the end of your freshman year and you don't need to have preferred admission to apply you can apply even as a regular student at least the last time i was in college which wasn't that far uh, that long yeah. ago but yeah so you can apply for cross campus transfer at the end of your freshman year and but it's okay. the same like it's basically like applying fresh to a school but the benefit is that you're right. already at michigan so you have more experience to right. prove that you would be a good fit fit yeah makes a lot of sense Yeah um now like you said you know Umich is a really big school its total undergraduate size of students is 33000 and it has three campuses so how do you really make a big school feel small and find your own place in it um you know how did you personally do this by getting involved on campus of course you did talk about the bajo leadership institute but you know beyond that uh did you like the entire state school experience and being at a lot school Yeah, I absolutely loved the state school experience and if I had to do it all over again, I would do the exact same thing. Even now at my job, you know, yeah. there are people who went to competing schools and whenever football games are on, we always talk about it and we make fun of each other and it's great to go to a big school because that means once you graduate, you have I mean, University of Michigan has the largest alumni network in the world. And so I'm always running into people who went to my college and we have this instant connection which is great. Um how did I make the large school feel small? I got involved in a lot of things. 
And then, you know, over time I realized instead of doing multiple things, I should do a few things, but do them really well. But I was involved in my freshman and sophomore year in a sorority on campus. That was a great way to meet people. But then I slowly realized I don't want to do, keep doing this forever. Uh, but I was still friends with the girls from my sorority. And, you know, through that, you get to meet a lot of people that you wouldn't have met necessarily on your own. And then Baju Leadership Institute, right. I got to meet people, other people who I worked with. So I wasn't the only uh, facilitator or consultant. There were several others. And you work very closely with them to design a curriculum. It's essentially like a TA job, yeah. but it's very hands-on learning. So that was a great community for me to work with. Um, I also started a startup on campus with a few people who were who all ended up in consulting jobs, which is funny, but uh, yeah. it's called Three Degrees. And Three degrees. we essentially used a group purchasing organization model to uh, bulk buy compostable products because so many places on campus were still using, you know, plastic to eat food out of and then they would throw it. And so we... Um, through my sorority experience, I actually was able to recruit, you know, some girls who are still in sororities and some guys who are in fraternities. And we actually went into these Greek life houses and replaced the containers that they ate out of with, wow. you know, for free. Yeah. We gave them um, these really, really cheap compostable products. And the issue with compostable is it's usually expensive. But because we bought it in right. bulk right. from suppliers, we had it for really cheap. So... Again, that was a great way to integrate, you know, an old Greek life experience to a new startup experience. And we got funding from the Baljo Leadership Institute, which was my third thing that I was involved in. So, so yeah, that's a, yeah. those are a few ways on how to make the community feel small. Also, organizational studies is a program you apply into in your, for your junior year. And that right. program only has like 50 students it's a very selective program and so you become friends pretty quickly with everyone else in that program and that's also a good opportunity to network and you know find some people who you probably wouldn't have met otherwise yeah yeah so that's some awesome so awesome advice in terms of getting involved with student clubs organizations and taking initiative on campus to actually initiate change in ways that you would like to see um, yeah, that's that's really great. And of course, athletics is also a really big, like you said, yes. at um, at UMesh, uh, right? So uh, did you, you know, are you big on sports? Was that something that you really did? Or even just like watching sports? Because I know Wolverine yeah. pride is like a huge thing. So um, yeah, how big is the culture at UMesh on this? It is insane. You basically every Saturday of the fall semester will go to the big house, which is our stadium. And you cheer for your team if it's a home game. And we have anthems that we sing together. Like the, imagine over 100,000 people singing the same song together. Everyone's wearing the same colors. Everyone's cheering the same name. It's very euphoric. And you get that team spirit really early on. And I still don't fully know how American football works, but I kind what? of have to learn it. Yeah, I faked it till I made it. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah, that's something that even if you have zero interest in sports, which I have zero interest in sports, you will be interested just because you feel this pride to your university. And Michigan had been losing for to Ohio State for several years. And in my first year of college, me and like my friend group, we were like, oh, like our dream is that by the time we graduate, Michigan beats Ohio State again. And we actually did. We yeah. beat them in my senior year. That's and awesome. then everyone <laughs> left the, their seats in the stadium and rushed the ground. And everyone was screaming and cheering. And then again, this year, Michigan beat Ohio State. So, you know, something changed. So, yeah, no, yeah. it's a great experience. And it's, it's just unreal to be able to, before the game, you go tailgating, which is just like yeah. a party before you go actually for the game and you, you can eat and drink and again sing Michigan Isle anthems and then you continue that for the whole day on Saturday and it's just great to be part of something wow. that's really bigger than yeah. you. Yeah, that, that sounds like the, the classic American college experience and you definitely yeah. got to experience that. Um, so yeah, that flows really well into uh, our next segment of the show, which we like to call a day in the life. So can you just take us through a typical day in your life at UMesh? 
Yes. Yeah, so sometimes I had really early morning classes. So I and I generally liked th- at the end of my sophomore year to wake up early. I was always a night owl, but then I switched. So um, I like to wake up early in the morning, like seven or seven thirty a.m. And then yeah. make myself breakfast, which was usually just like fruits or like avocado toast. And then I would walk to class and usually pick up a coffee on the way to class. And the campus has yeah. a lot of like Starbucks or like local coffee locations that you can pick up from. So I would do that and, you know, go to class in class. You know, you pull out your laptop, you take notes. Um, and then after class, I would usually try to like grab lunch with a friend in the campus area yeah so um you know sometimes i would text my friends so like mondays i would have lunch with this person tuesdays i would have lunch with another person sometimes you don't have a person to have lunch with but it's so normal to just eat by yourself too and yeah. um there are in the summer or in the fall there are lots of like green open spaces you can pick up food and just eat you know on the grass and or just yeah. lay after you're done eating eat and work it's just great to be outside and have that experience and then obviously there are like a lot of buildings that you can study in so if I didn't if I had a break between class and I needed to do homework then I would you know go to one of the libraries or Wiser which is the building I worked at and I would go and work there and then I would either have another class in the evening or I would go to work so it was alternate I would work three times a week and then two times a week I had classes so I would go to work and then, you know, that was working was a one hour training for that evening and then two hours of class, 30 minutes of debrief and then, you know, another hour of grading assignments. So that would also take up a chunk of my night. Um, And then, you know, on the days that I didn't have to teach, I would go work out. We have an arboretum, which is, you know, like a big garden and right next to it is this like gym and there's, now they have an open space there too where you can work out in the open but they have a closed space right. like windows which is like very cold in Michigan half of the year so yeah that's basically what I did we also have a bunch of classes around campus like soul cycle which is a spin class we had yeah. bar which is you know I, I love to go to these classes and again that's also How a great fun. way to meet people yeah because I get bored yeah. of like just working out by myself doing so. the same yeah. Exactly. So I would love to go to these spin classes and um, hit classes and have a community to work out with. Yeah, that sounds really fun. Um, and I mean, you know, like you touched upon, there are lots of natural areas to explore. You're right by the Huron River as well. So, um, you know, I'm sure summer was really nice with all of the outdoorsy stuff. How bitter did the winter get? The winter really wasn't that bad. You need a good thick jacket for sure. And if you don't have a big thick jacket, you just need to layer up. In my first year, I didn't have a good jacket and I just wore multiple layers. And then I got a nice jacket because I thought, okay, it's just going to be easier for me to go to class and get ready. So um, it is definitely survivable. And you obviously like will need some time to get used to it. I got used to it pretty quickly. Like first month, I was like, why is it so cold? Because obviously, like we're from India and that's just not (laughs) something we're used to. We're not used to. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. But there's a lot of people getting used to it. And, you know, you'll have support and you'll have resources, especially at Michigan. Like there are lots of like inside routes to get to class and you don't have to be walking outside all the time. And, you know, you can have gloves, have a little beanie, cover your ears and you'll be fine it's not bad and it gets over pretty fine yeah true yeah that's good advice (laughs) yeah um and to sum up this segment just on you what was your favorite thing about you oh that's a good question i think my favorite thing about you is i've always just felt like at my time there i was given opportunities to be better and to step up and to get more responsibility. So like particularly at the Bajo Leadership Institute where I stayed for four years, I taught a class. Then I became the person who trains people, who teaches that class. And then I had my startup. I received funding from there. I received a lot more training on being an entrepreneur and running a business from there. 
And then in my senior year, I actually recruited new people into the organization while I was leaving. And I was even able to meet the person who founded that organization. And he actually wow. runs BLI and also organizational studies, which was my major. And so it was great to meet him. And those were like two of his investments. And he was like, wow, like this is someone who's done both. And it was a great conversation to have with him on how I benefited from that. So, yeah, no, it was, I think it's the fact that they give you opportunities, even as someone who may not know everything, they give you opportunities yeah. and they give you resources and training and mentorship to be where you want to be. And people are very accessible. If you need someone to read your essay, you can get an appointment next day. If you need someone to help you with your resume, you can get an appointment next day. Um, you can reach out to your academic right. advisor and you can even be an academic advisor as a student. So it's it's just really yeah. a cool experience to learn, get a lot of like professional experience as a student, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think your entire college experience really speaks to the adage that college is what you make it and you really yeah. put so much time and effort into things outside of the classroom and it really paid off because it you know, taught you what your true passions were and, you know, yeah. gave you all of these opportunities that, that have got you where you are today. Um, so, so speaking of which, uh, landing a job at Goldman Sachs, the second largest investment bank in the world, is a pretty big deal. And you also mentioned that you had an internship there um, early on. So how much of a role did Umish, uh, Umish's career center, their seniors or alumni and everything on campus help with landing you this job? Yeah, so I think, so I actually also had a job. So I always had two jobs. So like in my junior year, I had a job at the University Career Center. And so I received a lot of training on how to interview, how to write resumes, how to, you know, have succinct answers and basically what do employers want to hear. And so when I was going through my own interview yeah. process, I'd already like trained so many people at that point, that it was, you know, good practice. And I was able to, even though like organizational studies is, a qualitative major I would say this like you know recruiting in finance was something that I was just it was a long shot I never I was still interested in consulting I never thought I would be working at a bank and I just you know I was like wherever I get a job I get a job so I applied yeah. to Goldman Sachs and the interview process was very rigorous we had several rounds of interviews so first round was a higher view which is a asynchronous interview essentially you record yourself yep. answering a few questions for other banks they give you a few tries to reiterate your answer mm -hmm. or re-say re-record your answer but goldman only gives you one try so it's more stressful but if you have a higher view for goldman that's a great sign because they don't give higher views to everyone and you know michigan really helped me like i could go to my boss and be like hi can we run through these questions and you know, and if you weren't right. working there, you could still have that opportunity, which is a great thing. And then Michigan yeah. also helped me just like get my foot in the door. I was able to talk to people who were Michigan grads at my current job and talk to them about very honestly about if they liked the job, what their experience was, things I should prepare for in the interview. And that is just not Goldman. I worked, I interviewed for a lot of banks and I found a person from Michigan at all of those banks. And like some banks actually have a University of Michigan affinity network, which is like a group of Michigan grads at the bank and they go and get drinks and food and get to know each other. So nice. I think that's how Michigan helped me. And people obviously know the name and people obviously yeah. are fans of American football and they always bring it up. So I would study yeah. on recent games before my interviews <laughs> in case it ever came up so I could have something to talk about. But right. yeah, that's how it helped me because at the time of my internship, I had only taken one finance class. So it's not like I had an abundance of knowledge from courses, but I was empowered right. by like that one finance class to, you know, listen to podcasts and read books on the market. And I think that's what enabled me to get the internship in the first place. Wow, that's really awesome. Um, and now, how has your experience working in finance been? Do you now see a long-term career for yourself within the finance industry? Tell us a little bit about that. Yes, definitely. I can't imagine I'm saying this, but I really love finance and I see that, uh, see that for myself as 
a long term career trajectory i work in credit risk so we get to work with any sort of debt transaction that goes through the investment bank so we work with you know like any loans that we're giving out to companies we work on trades that go through the securities desk we work on transaction banking we work on bonds notes we work on any sort of debt transaction so anything that requires that goes through us and it's so great to be a, at the heart of the organization and especially now yeah. that you know in the us interest rates are so high we get to see a lot of like complicated structures we get to see a lot of companies that like if they uh, need restructuring or you know they need to improve the organizational structure of their company we help them restructure and then you know we'll sell the company or we'll have them get back at par value which is like just helping them trade at a better price so investors buy their bonds and it's very technical but i learned every single thing on the job all i needed was a passion for finance and show that i'm a hard worker and you can learn everything on the job and it's very stimulating and very um incredible it's incredible to learn about all these huge companies that you've probably heard of and learn the ins and yeah. outs of them learn what their plans are for the future tell a story through numbers convince your boss this is a good idea or this is a bad idea and you're really like yeah. at the forefront of making decisions for these large transactions for these companies sometimes we even work with small companies and we grow them to be larger and that's also great to see like when i interned one of the companies i worked on was it was a startup and now it's going to be publicly listed so it's crazy that even in two years like you get to touch parts of these corporates and you get to learn them you get to defend them and then they might grow into a yeah. great thing and you're proved right or sometimes you're proved wrong about you know all external factors might affect their performance yeah so, yeah no it's it's really great it's very collaborative and you get to use your brain and use your communication skills on a daily basis and yeah i definitely see myself in finance that's so great yeah just hearing you speak about it you can tell that you're in the right place you know doing something yes. that you're really passionate about which is which is great and what a 360 degree turn from bio like looking I back know. if you had to reflect if you had to reflect like why do you think in in high school you thought bio is what, what was right for you I think that was what I was good at. That was something that I enjoyed learning. And in school, I think sometimes you are insulated by the school environment and you feel like, okay, what I'm studying is exactly what I'm going to do. And then being at the University of Michigan, you get like more hands-on experience. So if you're in a biology class, you also have to take a lab side by side. and that's what made me realize i don't yeah. really want to do this in real life like i don't really want to sit and mix these chemicals or cut a frog open and i don't want to be in a research lab and then also obviously like as an international student it's impossible to be a medical student in the us i was like okay that's yeah. not an option for me anyway and so and because i enjoyed my work experience i said okay i should translate that into a real job so yeah that's why i made the switch and you know the only reason i left i left the idea of consulting even though i had an offer there is because i didn't want to travel you know again like yeah. being an international student we've traveled right. so much and going yeah. back and forth and consulting you travel four times a week even though it's within the us usually i just wanted right. to be grounded yeah. and stable and the yeah. best part is in credit risk you still get to work with all these different companies and you actually get a deeper financial analysis instead of like just strategy so i really enjoy that yeah. and yeah so that's uh, for anyone must like yeah. that's a great option for you yeah yeah i love how your story showcases that it's such a such an iterative process and you know you sort of just figure it out as you do things and you reflect and you really you know think about what's true to you what you're looking for what are your goals for the long term so Um yeah thank you so much for sharing all of this with us and uh, yeah, to end the show you know we 
<laughs> yeah, so to end the show, we always like our students to just, you know, once again, learn from your journey and reflection. So just to, to close, is there any advice you'd like to give to incoming college freshmen, to you, Mish, or just in general, or to anyone going through their applications at this moment? Yes, yeah, so I would say one thing that I learned through my experience is there's not really value in doing multiple things. I think it's great to do a few things and really get in depth because you would rather be a expert in your field than a jack of all trades. And once you build expertise in something small, that skill can translate to so many different fields. And more than anything, it just proves that you can be an expert in something and you can work hard and learn something from start to finish. That's one piece of advice. My other piece of advice is if you don't know what you want to do, that's fine. It's okay if you keep changing your mind till the last minute. It's okay if you have a job and you still don't know what you want to do because if you think about it, this is really like day dot of your career. You have so much more to go on and learn and you can always keep learning and always keep reinventing yourself and that's totally fine. It's totally fine to have a creative side that you have a technical job and it's totally fine or vice versa. And I would just encourage people to, instead of just, you know, being in the classroom and just reading classwork, it's also great to read the news and see what's happening outside because ultimately that's what will translate in your, your life or your career experience. I would really encourage people to, you know, read Wall Street Journal or whatever, whatever they receive their news and find something that they're passionate about and really follow it. Because ultimately, if you want to, you know, really specialize in something, it's important to understand real world impacts, not just theories from books. So that's my advice. And yeah, I think that's it. I would just say, don't all, don't worry yeah. about, yeah, like don't worry about where you are right now. And if that's not where you want to be, you have the time and generally you can seek the resources to be where you want to be yeah those are really great words and a great note to end today's episode on so rashi thank you so much despite all of the time difference and everything for making this time to chat with us i know it's going to be super valuable for all our listeners and it's been so good for us to touch base with you again and see where you've been yes. since we worked on applications together Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you for having me. This was a great talk and even for me to reflect on everything. So yeah, thanks so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. You too.